true freshman that could impact things this year. We're not looking for red shirts. We're not looking for guys who will pop on the radar in 2025. I'm talking about guys like Nicholas Harbor. Do we have the track footage, by the way? Always some of my favorite film to watch from this past recruiting cycle was Nicholas Harbor running track. I want you to look at this and keep in mind, this alien here is 6'5", 225. I don't think I need to point out to you which one he is in the tape. But if you're listening on podcast, just picture someone twice the size of everyone else moving about twice as fast as everyone else. And then picture Shane Beamer and his coaching staff watching that and saying, yep, we want to have one of those. And they got him. They got him. It was a knife fight on the recruiting trail with Oregon, but they got him. Do you see, by the way, you're, you're listening on podcast, you're doing yourself a disservice. Ugh, that is gross footage. Look at him. How long is it going to take for whoever number two is? Okay, number two is barely in the frame. He finally showed up. There's zero chance that dude stays off the field this year. Uh, the one question about him has been, is he going to play football? Is he going to be a track and field guy? If he is playing football, they're not going to have a season at South Carolina if he's healthy where he's kept off the field. You don't recruit those kind of dudes at South Carolina and keep them off the field. At the very least, he will be a demon on special teams. And then red zone as well. I mean, I've got a guy who can, who can run a 10, 2200 meter, is 6'5", 225, and really it just has attributes that shouldn't be possessed by a human. Yeah, I think he'll be an impact player if he's actually able to play his freshman year. One of the highest ranked recruits in South Carolina history, like the number seven player they've ever signed, easily the highest ranked kid Beamer's brought in so far. There's another one in the SEC over in the West, and that's Sunterine Perkins. He's a linebacker, uh, 6'3", 205 pounds. He's the number three backer in the class overall, number 23 overall player. Saban wanted him really bad. Pete Golding, when he was at Alabama, wanted him really bad. And Pete Golding just decided, you know what, if I, if I can't get him to come to Alabama, why don't I go to Ole Miss? And he did. So Pete Carroll, or not Pete Carroll, uh, Pete Golding is now the defensive coordinator at Ole Miss, and he gets to coach Perkins after all. Massive get. Huge get for Lane Kiffin. I think people overlook the defensive acquisitions there for obvious reasons because they gave up 31.3 points per game defensively last year. But Andrew Ivins, who, as we all know, is one of the foremost voices in this recruiting space, and he doesn't even pay me to say that anymore. Used to, but he doesn't pay me to say it anymore because I really, truly believe it. Uh, one of his quotes from the last signing day was a uh, hidden gem of the 2023 cycle. You're looking at him, Santorin Perkins. I'm going to give you his stats in the state title game there in Mississippi. 32 carries. Now, mind you, we're talking about a linebacker, but some of these guys obviously are, are elite enough athletes. They just play both ways. 32 carries, 337 yards rushing, four touchdowns, four two-point conversion attempts, converted and uh oh by the way six tackles had an interception in the game extremely athletic off the charts athleticism and ability to move he can cover for a guy with his frame is really an insane athlete and one of the best in this past class uh out at texas what are we what are we talking about right now we're talking about Bijan robinson going to the draft right at running back and we're talking about roshan johnson he's out of there as well and we're talking about all these wide receivers at Texas. What are we going to do at running back? Well, Cedric Baxter is what we're going to do at running back. Cedric Baxter was the number one running back in this class, number 30 overall, five stars, obviously, 6'1", 215. They, as I said, lost some guys. And then also at Texas this spring, the guys they do have on the roster have been out at various points. I think Keelan Robinson's practicing again, but they've been out at various points, which has given Cedric Baxter time to get some very, very valuable reps in the spring. He's good enough on his own. Okay, I'm a believer that a guy like him, especially at the position he plays, will be able to, to transition into college life fairly effectively as a freshman. But also, when you're giving him extra reps in spring, or you if at least got that on the radar, it becomes all the more likely that he's about to be a player this year. He finished his high school career with 44 total touchdowns, 42 of them were of the rushing variety. And lastly, now we're getting to a money position here at a money program. And it's so ironic that I mentioned that word, given what the conversation was around this school landing, this player. Pay attention to my friends in Iowa City. 
I kid because I care, guys. Caden Proctor is at Alabama from Iowa. I may be there Friday. Um, I think he may start at tackle for him. Right now, Bama's in the middle of spring practice. And right now, pretty sure J.C. Latham is going to have one of those tackle spots. But right now, it's between, essentially, Elijah Pritchett, Carver High School, Columbus, Georgia, or Caden Proctor, as I see it. Uh, sure, if we had Nick Saban on the show right now, he wouldn't even let me get that out of my mouth without biting my head off. But that's pretty much how it's going to boil down there when all said and done. It's not crazy to talk about a true freshman starting at tackle there, talk about really young guys playing. It's not crazy. I mean, I can't remember, I can't remember exactly which ones played as freshmen, but when you think about like Alex Leatherwood, uh, Quanjo back in the day, Cyrus Quanjo, Cam Robinson when he came in there, these guys, they played early. Fluker, Jonah Williams, they, they just rattled off five-star tackles who have come in there and played pretty early. Jedrick Wills, I think, may have played as a freshman or sophomore. I think Caden Proctor possesses that ability. This dude was the number one tackle in the country, number five overall player, 6'7", 330. So they don't really need to necessarily physically develop him. He doesn't have to put any size on. He, he's ready from that standpoint. And I, oh boy, I look forward to that. Because see, this is one where we talked about it a lot. We talked about the recruitment of Caden Proctor. And if you have forgotten, let me refresh your memory. That's the one where he was from Iowa and he was committed to Iowa. And then Nick Saban decided he wanted him and they landed him. And then the allegations were that, well, Bama just went and bought him. And it was so loud that the kid himself came out and said, actually, I took less guaranteed money to go to Alabama, if that matters to anyone. you know. And then some folks had the audacity to say, Essentially, no, 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 you don't know what you're talking about. I'm right. Like, the kid himself is not the foremost authority on this. Uh, Hawkeye guy 83 on the YouTube comment section. That's who I need to be listening to. So I'm not, I know I kind of need to walk a fine line there because I'd be pissed if I were an Iowa fan too. So I'm not blaming you guys. And, and it doubly stings because it's an in-state guy. And you've got an established track record. In fact, per capita, you could argue you got a better track record of developing the offensive line position than Alabama. They've got more studs, but they've recruited more studs. I, I get the argument on your side. My point was then and still is, he didn't go there for money. He went there because it's Alabama. Uh, that's, it's nothing to be sad about. Well, it's nothing to, to feel like you've been wronged over. I guess you can be sad about it. But yeah, I think he's going to be an impact freshman. Uh, Baxter, Sunterine Perkins, Nicholas Harbor. I think all of those are impact freshmen this year. 